Welcome to uh, this new session uh, dedicated to uh, cross-border and transnational uh, hubs. And um, so um, today we are going to, well, in this session, we are going to have uh, like a, a, an overview of uh, what it's exactly a cross-border hub and uh, different um, you know examples and good practice so before to start uh, probably now you are uh, getting more familiar with um, also with uh, with the tool um, just to explain a little bit the, the how the, the rules um, so please uh, if you have uh, any q a uh, use the um, on the you know the the, the q a um, uh, tool um, on uh, on on the left on the right of um, of your screen uh, if you have any technical problem, use the chat, and uh, there will be just one pool for for uh, for us. And um, and I would like to to ask you uh, then to answer to this question. And to see the answer, you need to 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 answer to <laughs> to the pool. And uh, and then you will find. Um, after after the session uh, some uh, some documents uh, and uh, the slides uh, that you can download um, so uh, uh, in the core before uh, to present the speakers uh, and um, going deeper on um, you know the topic the cross border hub uh, I would like to ask to my colleague Anna to open the pool and uh, ask her to all the um, or the participants, uh, if uh, they can, um, uh, if uh, they have ever, ever considered to build uh, a cross-border hub, so then we can uh, we can uh, have uh, have a look to uh, to the pool. And at the same time, I'm going to uh, introduce you. What what is a cross-border and transnational hubs? Because we mentioned this option uh, in the, in our document uh, in um, concerning the, the, the I mean the, the draft program uh, dedicated to EDIH the document and uh, we are mentioning uh, the the, uh, the cross border and transnational hubs so what are, what is it so in just in a few uh, in a short sentence uh, uh, an EDIH, it's an EDIH so it have to cover all the the, the services of uh, typical EDIH, but the the target uh, it's just, well the aim is also to serving neighboring regions in different countries um, so neighboring regions this is the key point and uh, why we consider cross border transnational hubs because in some case uh, uh, in the there's uh, some sometimes uh, the small and medium enterprises uh, that operate in that uh, in that border suffer of uh, uh, you know barriers uh, in terms of um, territorial coverage uh, but also they are probably small um, you know, um, small areas uh, near the border, and probably the, for, the, for a member state who have to co-financing this could be uh, not uh, interesting uh, or it difficult to um, to find, but to find to cover um, in this um, this co-financing. At the same time, the cross-border hub can develop an ecosystem uh, on two sides of a border, two sides or more than I mean uh, of uh, neighbor countries. At the same time, uh, we can um, in, in, in increase the, the and make stronger collaboration, but at the same time make uh, the um, resources are more efficient because uh, one service covering uh, uh, two countries and time the uh, member states can join uh, co-financing co uh, together the same uh, the same hub because the uh, partners from different countries so um I would like to introduce, uh, before the introduction uh, of the topic, I would like to introduce uh, our speakers uh, of, uh, of today. Um, so, Arnaud Lambert, who is director of uh, the uh, Digital Innovation Hub 
Luxembourg and uh, uh, who is going to present us uh, a good practice or best practice um, of, of uh, the um, how the EDH in Luxembourg is going to to approach uh, this topic. Uh, the second speaker will be Romualdas Petraitis, also um, 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 director of Smart Energy Digital Innovation Hub. And uh, um, the, the last but not least, Ricardo Ferreira from DG Rigio is going to give us uh, an overview um, on uh, what is the, uh, um, I mean, the, 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 from the financial point of view, how we can find a co-financing across border digital innovation hub. So uh, before to invite Arnaud, um, I would like to ask to Anna if we can uh, have already some uh, some input from the poll. Okay, so uh, if I go to the poll, we so. Uh, actually, we are uh, half half, so fifty per mom. Well, sixty percent of um, of people are interested, but are uh, already considered the idea, and the forty-two percent uh, has not. Um, so hopefully, uh, this uh, uh, this session maybe there will be something more. So Arno, I would like to give uh, to present uh, uh, you know, the best practice from Luxembourg. The floor. Thank you. If, uh, if I can have the first slide. First of all, everybody, I mean, you had already a discussion of uh, the Luxembourg Digital Innovation Hub by uh, Mario Brooks this morning from the Ministry of Economy and by, by Benjamin PST earlier on this afternoon. Uh, but um, I want to put things in perspective in view of, of course, the topic of today, which is about cross border. Um, just to, to understand the focus of the Luxembourg DH, we took a conscious focus to be on, on basically SMEs on manufacturing, so industry 4.0, and with the competences from a technological point on HPC, on cyber security, and on AI. Now, why is cross border something where Luxembourg is, is very familiar? Um, for the people that know us on the map, um, we are, of course, a large country of 2.6 square kilometer. Uh, with 620,000 inhabitants and around 150,000 cross border. So we have, of course, at this stage, we have large needs and we have a, a very active hub. Um, but we have always been using to collaborate with our partners, first of all, with the three borders we have, with Germany, France, and Belgium, and where we qualify the greater region. That's where Working at the greater regional level suddenly brings already a very different dimension uh, that we have, uh, since suddenly we reach 65,000 uh, square square meters, and then we are reaching around 11 million inhabitants. So it changes really the scale in terms of reach. But here, for for the point of the discussion here, um, the cross collaboration can take very different levels. And here, I'm going to focus on the first stage, and, and I think that all the guest speakers are going to go gradually into the other ones. And the first is about the cross collaboration. Why should EDH work in cross collaboration? So, if we can go to to the next slide, I mean, first of all, the the first, of course, obvious matter is that. And if you case, take the case of the Luxembourg Digital Innovation Hub, um, we are actually addressing the SMEs of the industries. So the first thing is that um, different SMEs have very different needs. And you might have, of course, local expertise, but the most probably in the digital aspect, you won't have all the expertise uh, locally. And that's why one of the first and key focus of an LDH is definitely to go from, I would say, your local needs into reaching out abroad. The first from Luxembourg will be clearly reaching out to the greater region, and then from the greater region to uh, the, the other countries in, in Europe. And, and should that not be sufficient, but with all the experience we have in Europe that should be, we would go further. Um, because the starting point is the customer. The starting point is the, the company that we are serving. And that's where it's our duty as DH to find the relevant expertise 
and to link the customer needs into the offering, be it local, be it regional, or be it European. Um, expertise reach is one thing, but I think that's more on servicing the customer needs. Now, service mutualization is definitely another area of cross-border collaboration. In this case, for, for Luxembourg side, we have the pleasure to be focusing on HPC. That is an infrastructure that can be not only used for the local, of course, needs, but and it can also be used for other needs for other EDH. And vice versa, if you have on the test before invest, you will have certain facilities in other side of Europe um, that there is no need to replicate that, but more to mutualize the usage for an improved benefit from the end customer, but also from the usage and utilization of the assets. That's about existing services. But we can also think and more and more about co-creation of new services between EDH, putting our relative expertise together to create new services that can be therefore then offered to our respective customers being local, again regional or European. Here I'll speak about more how the EDH are, can do cross-collaboration, cross-border collaboration, so meaning in this case not only looking at how you can collaborate with other EDH of your country, but definitely reaching out to the other EDH uh, that would be on the other side of the border. Now, when EDH do collaborate, and especially uh, also across border, collaboration means definitely having standards on how to interpret and how to interact. And that can also vary because of local legislation, even if there is a lot of harmonization at the European level, there is clearly a need to see how to elaborate standards for the interaction. So collaboration, not only cross-border, requires setting up standards, which is definitely a topic I believe is going to be addressed in different sessions also later on. Last but not least, different countries, different borders, and different EDHs means also different level of maturity of the EDHs. We already discussed that in this morning session and the start of the afternoon, and one key element of, of collaboration, not only national collaboration, but definitely cross-border collaboration, is about the best practices and the exchanges there. And this is really where, to deliver the, the, the vision that we have from EDH in Europe, this collaboration is best practice, certain and more advanced than others in certain fields. It's about, we will only succeed all together if we are actually be able to improve the maturity of everybody. Now, on cross-border collaboration, I want to bring an example, and that's the, the next slide, a tangible one. Um, and it's actually a case of, an inter, I would say, greater region collaboration between the Saarland and next to Luxembourg, um, the Lorraine, uh, and, and also Wallonia in, in, uh, in Belgium. So Germany, France, and, and Belgium. And it's actually the, the base needs from a, an EDH, and I think we all have that, is this uh, maturity assessment tool um, and from that point of view of course you have many already existing in the market the private sector etc and you have different researches taking place of that. Uh, the University of Luxembourg is part uh, of, of a group um, uh, around in the Grand Region Interact project called ProPilot where the, 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 the objective of that program is really about productivity and improvement for SMEs and how you can measure that. And as part of that, they have actually worked into a digital aspect, which was definitely key in maturity and in the improvement of the process of productivity. Um, the Unity Universe Luxembourg has joined the consortium there that you can see different names of different institutions in different countries. And, and the University of Luxembourg is one of the key stakeholders and partner of the DH, the Luxembourg DH. So what we have done, we have actually put our expertise as DH so reaching out to the different companies to test that model that they had foreseen as part of the research project. And why, uh, why a new tool or why a new method? Because uh, the existing ones were all very lightweight or very detailed, and it was an issue of adoption into the, um, the SMEs. So their objective was to find the right balance and with new dimension that they could bring that to SMEs for higher adoption. So we help them as DH to actually test that into Luxembourg, also increasing their sampling for benchmarking for the tool 
And through the collaboration between the three regions, we all could test in our different regions with different flavors, of course, of what nationalities and regions do take to in the end get a higher maturity product. And I know there is different initiatives for, for digital maturity assessment. It will also be a session that will be discussed tomorrow. But this is a practical case of crossing the borders, reaching out to the different expertise and working together in a project with a tangible output. But again, that's the first step of cross-border collaboration. I think when we're going to cross-border EDH, we bring it to the next level. But for that, I leave the floor to the next speakers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Arnaud. And um, I would um, I would uh, just have a short question to, to you, Arnaud. It takes uh, actually as uh, the IH um, to build up this kind of um, collaboration. I mean, um, if you can give like uh, some uh, some practical tips for those that would like to start uh, this kind of uh, this kind of collaboration. Um. I mean, I think for collaboration first, it needs to serve the needs and the purpose for the different, I would say, <clears throat> entities collaborating. So each of them needs to be joined to one common goal. Uh, of, of an output, and that output can have also various, I would say, uh, variation depending on, on what you're aligned to, but at least it should be one common goal, and then there should be a benefit for everybody of the same type of nature. So from that point of view, it starts with complementary skills, complementing the collaboration, because if you collaborate, it's because you can't do it yourself. And therefore, the starting point is to find, to be clear on the objective, find the right complementarities between different parties. And the third aspect is making sure that everybody benefits from the output. It can be from different depth, but everybody benefits from the output. This is would be for me the, the three key, I would say, advice I would give. And, and clarify that up front before you jump into the pool and, and start the work, because it will avoid you to, uh, to be sidetracked. Thank you, Arnaud. And uh, now um, I'm going to give the floor to uh, Romualdas uh, Petraitis to give another kind of example of um, uh, collaboration and cross-border hub. So another kind of approach. So um, Romualdas, the floor is yours. Thank you, Elena. Um, let's start. At the beginning of the last year, the relevant authorities and business associations from Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and Poland expressed interest in setting up a cross-border digital innovation hub competent in the areas of renewable energy, climate change, and the circular economy. As the challenges in the above areas are not restricted by any borders, effective solutions can only be reached at regional level. The Cross-Border Smart Energy Digital Innovation Hub focuses on business realities, plans, and visions in the following areas. Renewable energy market, offshore wind and solar, energy efficiency, smart energy distribution network, conversion of fossil fuel-based power plants into renewable energy sources, sustainable transport and logistics, circular economy and reduction of greenhouse gas emission. Next slide, please. Cross-border cooperation is particularly important for small countries such as the Baltic states, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, which can also use this opportunity to enter the EU value chains. It was therefore decided to unite all parties in their efforts to address these pressing challenges of today. For Eastern countries like the Baltic States and Poland, cross-border cooperation in the field of renewable energy is of strategic importance as the region develops a common energy ecosystem that provides security and independence. Therefore, when it comes to implementation, there are two models of the cross-border European Digital Innovation Hub could be considered. First one, establishment of a cross-border European Digital Innovation Hub 
by several member states, financed 50% by the European Commission, and the remaining 50% co-financed by the participating member states in equal shares. For example, two countries, 25% each, four countries, around 12% each. In this context, the European Commission support and recommendations for the development of such a cross-border European Digital Nation Hub model would be very important. A second one, as a leading role of one European Digital Nation Hub, coordinating activities with other countries that several European Digital Nation Hubs agree to work closely together and use a common approach. Next slide, please. Let's speak shortly about organization and governance structure of the Smart Energy Baltic Digital Innovation Hub. One common element of cross-border regions in Europe, however, is that cross-border cooperation has a long tradition in the old member states of Europe, and that it is gaining fast significance for the new border regions of Eastern Europe. This background together with evolutions of institutional challenges and the specific preconditions have in each case lead to the development of specific solutions of the respective cross-border governance. The role of governance in the present context is understood as definition of the set of values, principles, and norms, formal and informal, that guide and drive the development specific cross-border smart energy digital innovation hub policies. That is to define the basic actors, procedures, and legal means of the collective action. Governance of the cross-border digital innovation hub is a type of institutionality that is characterized by being the area of decision making, which is also open to all actors stakeholders, businesses, communities, and public sector, open internally and externally to intergovernmental relations between local management on both sides of the spectrum. Next slide. At the end, I'd like to stress that this model of cross-cooperation will be relevant for small and medium enterprises that benefit most by joining the vertical chain and participating in smart energy digital innovation hubs process of bringing to life the largest green energy projects. Simultaneously, SMEs would be able to participate in the development of the EU's decarbonization processes, generation of carbon neutral, cost efficient energy, conversion of fossil fuel based power plants into renewable energy sources, and implementing a digital Baltic platform, a next generation e-exchange for the secondary market of trading in emission allowances. Thank you for attention. Thank you, uh, Romualdas, for uh, this um, this presentation. Uh, um, just one uh, one question to you. Um, well, actually, well, you 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 put together too many countries, uh, also well, small countries, big countries. So, what is for you, um, in your in your experience, uh, the main or the biggest uh, challenge uh, in uh, building uh, up this kind of uh, this kind of uh, you know collaboration? You know, the biggest challenge maybe is to agree for all countries, as you mentioned, small and bigger, to agree the co-finance of uh, this uh, kind of uh, European Digital Innovation Hub. And in the beginning, we decided that every country designate uh, their own national European Digital Innovation Hubs. And after that, we will think about, about cross-border European Digital Innovation Hub. And I think this conference and this session will be a good, good push for this, for this uh, reaction. Thank you, Romualdas. And now, um, 
we are going to um, well um we had a look at the practical uh, uh the um, i mean um, the two different models uh, and approach to the cross border collaboration and cross border edih um now i would like to give the um, the floor uh, to ricardo ferreira from digiregio uh, and he's going to give you uh, some uh, inputs uh, how to um I mean, how to co-financing uh, the border EDIH, knowing that the Digital Europe program will cover the 50% of the total budget of the EDIH and of the consortium, and um, the, the rest of the part, uh, the, 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 the rest of the 50% should be covered by the member states. And in this case, uh, well, we will see. <laughs> but, okay, <laughs> how? So, uh, Ferre, uh, Ricardo, I will give you the floor. Um, the floor Thank is you. you. Thank you, Elena. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to participate in this session. Uh, I come from the G Regio, so I have a different perspective than most of the participants. I don't work every day with digital innovation. I work every day with territorial development, with cross-border development of, of regions. So my participation here is a bit to give you the perspective, to share with you the perspective of the potential of a cross-border hub seen from the, the angle of a cross-border region. I want to thank DigiConnect for uh, promoting the, the, the option for cross-border hubs. We could not agree more on the need, on the potential for, uh, for such hubs to, to take place. And we should start by asking ourselves why. Why? should those entities that have been pre-selected as potential applicant for a hub consider submitting proposal for a cross-border hub? Well, there are two types of answers for this question. The easy answer would be on the limitation of resources. Indeed, there is a limited number of hubs that need to, that may be funded. And if we join together, we can increase and we can enlarge the, the territory of each one, therefore uh, getting f more opportunities uh, to, to promote the development of the region. And there's also the need to find the national contributions. Therefore, finding synergies between partners may allow, like Homewald has just presented, uh, divide, dividing the need to provide the national contributions in smaller shares. Both these points target two synergies from extending your partnership. Uh, Arnaud also presented the element of the shared skills. Different, different partners can bring in different skills and therefore enlarge the effectiveness. But the answer to why to promote across border hubs is much faster, it's much wider, it goes much beyond. It is much about enhancing the effectiveness of innovation promoted by hubs. There is one element, one key element um, that we that we know in cross-border co cooperation is that in spite of single market, we still experience in all types of interactions and business interactions alike, we all experience border obstacles that hamper interactions. This leads to a lost market. In other terms, we see cases in which you, a small, uh, an SME has a natural market that would be the territory 300 degrees around itself, but then because there is a border, it only can explore 180 degrees of that territory because of those tiny little legal border obstacles that create difficulties in accessing the market on the other side. It's interesting to see that the SME strategy from DigiGrow, from the Commission, is now putting a big emphasis on the need to work uh, to solve this type of border obstacles. This lost market is what we call a border effect, and this is huge. If we research shows that if we would solve only one-fifth of existing obstacles because we assume that it's impossible to solve all of them. Some of them are, phys are uh, physical nature, of, of like the morphology of the territory. 
if we would be capable to solve one-fifth of existing obstacles, this could lead to an increase of 2% of GDP on border regions. 2% of GDP, that is to say 1 million jobs. So the major is issue here is that by addressing a cross-border territory, you would certainly increase the success of the innovation in the supported SMEs by HUB. Therefore, you would certainly be increasing the effectiveness, the potential development generated by the HUB itself. So my challenge to, to all of you is before closing your applications, take a look across the border and see if there are synergies that you could explore with partners on the other side of the border. If you could together promote SMEs that would themselves become cross-border and they have access to a bigger market. Next slide, please. Um, I would point to, pinpoint to, we don't have much time, I would only pinpoint you to four uh, different tools that could be very interesting to solve some of those legal elements. One is on um, the management. If you want to push for a cross-border digital innovation hub, there is a challenge on what should be the management structure. It's a huge issue. There is certainly not one-size-fits-all solution. What is a good solution on one place is certainly not necessarily the good solution for another one. But there is this element of EGTC, the European Grouping of Territorial Cooperation. I invite you to explore this. I've left some reading references in the files section. The EGTCs are a tool by which you could be creating a legal entity of a, of a cost border nature itself. Therefore, it would simplify significantly the success the, of, the, of, the, of the management. Experience shows that when we do cross-border cooperation, frequently we have an issue with balancing interests. Arnaud has presented this clearly. We need to ensure that all the partners in a partnership are clearly there and all the partners have a clear interest there and have a clear element of what they can bring in, what they want to benefit from. Um, and this difficult element sometimes raises issues in the management process. How do we manage cooperation? And the GTCs have, have proven to be a, an interesting solution for many cases. The second element I would want to point you to is this B Solutions. This B Solutions is a tiny little project that we are launching, by which it's very, very small in, in size, by which we are providing legal support to address legal obstacles on cross border regions. What are these? Cases by which the lack of a legal competence, the lack of a legal provision, hampers interaction across the world. For example, Lithuania, Poland, we had a problem with the lack of legal uh, of a legal framework that would allow for a business, a cross-border business incubator. That was one of the cases that was was addressed there. With these B solutions, what we are providing is legal support. We are sending one lawyer specialized in cross-border cooperation to assess the elements that have been found to be a problem in the, in the territory. It's quite easy to apply in this process when you are searching for, uh, when you are building your partnerships, you are certainly finding difficulties with many different elements. We have a call running now until the 11th of March for cases in which we could provide some legal assistance to solve that type of obstacles. The, the link is there. The third element is just a reference, a reading reference. It's this uh, Border Focal Point platform, the Border Focal Point Network. It's a platform where we are uh, providing sharing of knowledge. We are there uh, storing all the information that we have, different stories, all these stories that we talk about these obstacles they are there. Uh, please take a look at this platform. I believe you could you could find very interesting cases. 
And more than that, you could use this platform to share your own experiences, to share your own difficulties, to find solutions from others. Furthermore, in the end, uh, we don't see in the slide, on the bottom of the slide it doesn't show, there is also this European cross-border mechanism, uh, which is a legal tool that is currently in legislative process, European cross-border mechanism, by which, um, by which we promote the, uh, we create the legal framework to find solutions for specific obstacles. This is to say, in cases where the legal framework for a specific technical standard, for example, on one side of the border is different from the legal standard on the other side of the border, this mechanism would create the legal solution to adopt one common legal framework that would apply for the entire project. It's still in a legislative process, but it's something that um, digital hubs should be aware because when it's adopted, it will become a major solution for many of the obstacles. Next slide, please. Finally, on co-funding, and I, I must rush, I, I know that I'm overpassing my time. Um, I will only highlight a, a few points. Um, we have seen the synergies between fundings, funding schemes have already been discussed in this in the session today at two o'clock called Digitizing SMEs the European Way. So for those that of you that are uh, really on the funding element on how to build synergies about funding, I invite you to revisit the streaming the, the, of that session, Digitizing SMEs the European Way. Um, but I would point you to one or two elements. In particular, I would point you to Interreg. Interreg is part of ERDF, the European, European Regional Development Fund. But it is a part of ERDF that is focused on the cooperation element. It addresses, while most of ERDF addresses regional development in general, Interreg addresses those specific elements where you need to build cooperation with your neighbor. And therefore, it is quite interesting to explore to, to, problem, to cases like the digital hubs, uh, different projects, different solutions. It could be even be used by some of the by some of your clients by, in some of your projects. But one interesting element that must be that must be kept in mind is this idea of shared management, like all ERDF. Uh, Inter Interreg is based on the principle of shared management. This is to say, it is not the Commission that says, that prescribes what is funded in each territory. It is the program authorities, it's the program authorities, it is the territory that decides what should be funded in their, uh, in their, in their given territories. In other words, there will be some territories, there will be some borders where Interreg could become useful, a useful funding source for digital innovation hubs or some of the projects they, they would create, while in some others it would not be the case. This implies that if you would be, if you would be searching for these synergies among, uh, between funding sources, this would be the moment for you to find what the program authorities are doing are uh, doing in your own territories, in your own borders, because the programming is taking place uh, is taking place in twenty one twenty seven. For those of you who know uh, who have some knowledge on, on ERDF and regional funding, I draw also your attention to one element. Uh, one innovative element in uh, in the in the framework period 21-27. This is to say that regional and national operational programs, those that are not in the head, those that are responsible for the vast majority of the budget, they will have to embed the element of cooperation in their own programs. This is to say there will be opportunities to support cooperation under regional operational programs. Again, depending on what the national and regional authorities would program in their own, in their own programs. 
Uh, I think I should shut up. I've been talking for too long. Just one uh, final message. In the files section, I've dropped there one page with several reading references that may be useful for some of you. Uh, thank you so much. Sorry for being so long. Thank you, um, Ricardo, for this um, um, this final presentation. Actually, it was very useful because uh, somehow y y you give uh, some uh, some tips and some tools, uh, some instrument actually to build up uh, um, a digital innovation hub across border and transnational digital innovation hub. So I, I wanted just to highlight two points uh, before uh, to close. Um, this session. Uh, so the first point, it's about uh, um, the coordination of a cross-border uh, cross um, DIH, because of course, uh, since we have uh, different uh, um, different countries involved and we know that the uh, uh, the selection at least from uh, for digital for digital euro program is on two steps so first steps uh, national and the second steps is european um, somehow the, the, if we want to build up a cross border uh, of course uh, you need uh, uh, the um, i see the endorsement of each member state uh, things that is not easy but I think that could be possible. And uh, also you have, this is why we want to collaborate very close with the member states because Europe and EDIH, I mean, um, needs uh, uh, in order to work uh, uh, efficiently, uh, needs to work together with other uh, programs, uh, national, regional funds. So this is why it's very important um, um, I mean, the, the role of, of the member states in our process, in our selection, because they have the overview. And uh, so um, with them, you will be able also to, to find a um, solution in terms of financing. This is at the, at the national level. So you need the endorsement, even if you are coming from different uh, uh, member states. At European level, as um, Ricardo said, um, the problem it will be the coordinator. So you will need uh, uh, one coordinator, so one proposal, uh, and maybe this this kind of tools can help uh, uh, you know the consortium uh, to build up uh, a management like uh, a, a head to lead uh, the, the the proposal because then um, it would be only one proposal at uh, at uh, at European level. This is. Uh, then, of course, uh, each territory, each area has its own, um, uh, you know, I would say um, um, we have to detect the case by case, uh, the situation uh, and also what are the priorities, because uh, the important thing it's uh, as uh, Romuald has and Arnaud said, this is the collaboration to optimize the resources, uh, in particular uh, for uh, small countries that maybe don't have uh, all the resources uh, in-house, in but could be uh, a good way to, to find, uh, you know, um, um, yeah, different kind of uh, collaboration and um, develop uh, uh, new know-how and, and in particular support uh, the um, small and medium enterprises, uh, public sector in uh, you know in in that uh, in, in that specific uh, region. So I, I would like to thank you, the speakers, uh, for their intervention. I'm going to upload the the, uh, the presentation, and uh, I will also collect the Q and A, and uh, we will also elaborate internally because some of them are specifically dedicated to you know the legal uh, and, uh, and financial point of view from the digital uh, Europe program point of view. So we are going to collect and uh, I will try to, to upload uh, the answers. So um, thank you again. And uh, I, I hope that, um, that this presentation gives you some inspiration, uh, not probably for the first call, but uh, probably maybe for the for the second uh, for the second call, in order to optimize the the, the forces uh, and um, and uh, maybe uh, develop um, new new kind of um, um, solutions in terms of cross borders uh, hub. Uh, thank. You.
very much and um, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.